Hi, how's it going? Thanks so much for joining me. So today I'm going to share my favorite language arts resources. And these are my favorites that have been since like um, kindergarten through our current grade we're in right now when I'm filming this video, which my daughter's in fourth grade. Okay, so if you want to see some other items um, or some of these things I've already been shown, but, you, but this video, I just wanted to compile various resources from different years. So yeah, so the first thing, oh yeah, and so... Um, I couldn't, I didn't really have room in this video. Well, I won't have room in this video because the video will probably be like um, two hours to include books. So if you're interested in more book recommendations, check out my independent reads um, video and our read alouds for fourth grade. And in that video, I share a lot of book ideas if you're looking for that. I'm going to share a few books, but I mean, they're all books, but I mean like fiction Okay, so the first thing that I've actually added for fourth grade that I'm really enjoying and I'm going to continue going forward is journaling. This is something that I just never thought, um, I don't know, like my daughter has had journals before, but I didn't really include them in, in homeschool. And so this was like a really good idea that I wish I would have done sooner. And I just bought her this academic planner. I'm going to actually link everything I can find from this video on Amazon or if it's like a separate website, I'll link it. Okay. So this is just a journal. I bought her like some cute stickers. These are her Halloween stickers for this month. And then basically my only rule is that she write the date. So I really wanted her to just like practice writing the date. And then I'm gonna show you guys what she uses with this. So this is just something we start off our day with. I don't really have rules for it other than I just wanted her to like be able to learn how to like keep time, et cetera. You know, the, keep it, be aware of the date and things like that and that's mainly what she uses it for and then she'll put like stickers and stuff um if she wants to and do little drawings so yeah so the journal is really fun for this year and um this is she's been using this book with it this is hello world and basically every day she picks a different greeting which these are mostly hello they do have some goodbye at the end, but it's mostly hello, how people say hello in all different languages. And so she picks one little lift the flap every day. So she's she's actually, she wanted to learn languages, so I thought it'd be interesting to do this edition. And she decided on her own to just write these in her little journal. And this book, and this book I highly recommend. It's really cool for kids just to get a quick introduction to other languages. And at the end, it's like goodbye world. And it has like a large lift the flap of all different languages, different languages of goodbye. Okay. Okay, that's that. And then this is kind of just something extra I wanted to show. These are really, these, I like the whole series. We have another one. This one is Shakespeare, a stage full of Shakespeare stories. 12 tales retold for children by Alan, and I'm sorry, Angela McAllister. Okay, so this book, um, I just want to show it real quick because I love the format of it for language arts because, especially if you're doing like book reports and stuff, I like how it introduces the characters as a separate page. And I think that's very helpful. Now these are retelling. Some people would want to possibly do the original Shakespeare. That doesn't bother me because I just wanted her to like be introduced to Shakespeare. And then when she was like older, you know, we probably will do more like original, you know, like originals by Shakespeare, his original stories. But I like these because like I personally don't enjoy reading Shakespeare. I'm just like not good at it. Um, so uh, I like the retellings. So regardless, I think it's a good, it's a neat format. They also have like Dickens. We have the Dickens one. And they have like a bunch of other ones. So I just really love this series. I just want to show it as like one of my favorite language arts resources. And what we do is we break these up and we read them as read alouds. And then um, this is really awesome. I love these. So I had these in my card for years on Amazon and I really regret not getting them sooner because four to six is the highest. Is the, This is the only four to six I can find. But they have like I think two to, grades two to three, maybe one to two, et cetera, et cetera, maybe three to four. But I couldn't find any higher ones, so I don't. It's I don't think we're gonna you know continue it because she'll be in fifth grade next year. But I really wish I would have started these sooner because um, it gives a really good 
nice introduction to different vocabulary words that you have to guess and add a word, subtract a word until you get like the word at the top of the ladder. So it really makes her think and yeah. Oh, I want to show you these two, these are cute. So instead of using, um, I got these, they have them on Amazon, it's like Remarks brand. I got these actually Barnes and Noble, but it's just a little paper with a magnet and I replaced all of our paper, like paper, paper, this is paper, but paper that's not magnetic. You know, the little regular, I think I have them somewhere. Like the regular sticky tabs, they were just like falling out of everything. Bookmarks were falling everywhere. So I was just got, like, I've, I've been knowing about these magnetic tabs, but I never really use them for our homeschool items. And I'm so glad, like you can see, like I made the switch. These were, I bought like four packs of these. And that's another one, a little favorite. I have to show you guys. I'll tag these. I don't know if I can find the same design, but I'll tag similar ones on Amazon. These have been so, so nice. I wish I would have discovered these sooner in homeschool. Okay, I'm blabbing. Okay, so word ladders, love those. Now, I showed journaling, the language book, the Shakespeare book, and then now I'm getting into vocabulary, which the word ladders was the first favorite. And these aren't in order of favorites. These are just like all of my favorites. Okay, then the second item is this. This is from another homeschool YouTuber mom. And this, uh, the learning ladder, I'll link her channel and I'll link this from Amazon. So this we used this year in combination with this. And I'll show you guys this in a minute, but this could go with any vocabulary book. It's just a, a notebook where you write the word, define it. You can do different things with it. Sometimes we do this orally. Sometimes she'll write the sentence out, use it in a sentence. And then her really favorite thing is to draw a picture with it. And then we look up with the thesaurus. She uses the thesaurus to do the um, synonym. So this has been really fun this year. And yeah, it's a really nice addition for us. Because normally we were just doing the words orally for vocabulary. And now she's doing it in this. So yeah, really like that. And then what we're using it with this year is this. This is 365 words for clever kids. And I'm just gonna show it real quick. I've shown this in probably like, my, I know for sure my curriculum video, but it has, what I really liked about this book is it groups off the set of words by the week. So each week she picks one word and then she used that word for that vocabulary journal. And it just has a really quick definition. So. But that's okay with me because, like, I just want her... Basically, this is just word um, I, exposure. Like, for me, the way I teach vocabulary is just word exposure. I just want her to be exposed to other words that she might not be hearing in her normal reading. And I've, that's one thing I've stuck with from the beginning of homeschool is I always buy a vocabulary book every year. Except, like, kindergarten. I don't think I did, but... So I love that book. And then the next uh, vocabulary book is 365 Words Everyone Should Know. This is book, I believe we used this one last year for third grade. And this one, very similar to the one I just showed you guys, it's actually grouped, this one's grouped by like categories of different sets of words. And then you, I would just literally have her randomly, like just shoot, you know, <laughs> like pick a word and she would just pick it, and I would have her read it out loud, the definition. Oh, yeah, I think I was having her write them on a whiteboard. I forgot, but I think that's what I was doing. If she would write it and make a sentence on the whiteboard on the wall, but I like the notebook better. Okay, so that's another one of my favorite vocabulary books. This is probably my favorite of all the books of the vocabulary hardbacks. Because, or, well, this is all fact. Because I just really love the illustrations. This is the Dictionary of Difficult Words. And Francis Lincoln is a publisher. This one we really loved. We did the same. So this one actually has like a little thing about the parts of speech. What I loved about this one is we did the same format. I would just literally have her randomly, you know, pick a page um, and then like pick a word and read it out loud and then write it on the board. But the illustrations are so fun. And some of the page, some have like a big giant page spread and then other ones or just like, you know, like that on that page, sorry. It's just really modern, fun illustrations. So really loved that one. 
Okay, so now we're moving from vocabulary onto handwriting. So for handwriting, I've pretty much used the same two companies since kindergarten. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick. The first one is Handwriting Without Tears. So I've been using Handwriting Without Tears, kindergarten first. Second is when we, um, let me just start from the beginning. So I, as you can see, you guys, like I'm a, I'm a big fan of Handwriting Without Tears. I just want to show you guys real quick. So we started with kindergarten. I wrote I wrote it on there so I wouldn't get them mixed up. And then, because um, I want to go back and like look through these. I don't keep all of her workbooks, but I decided to keep her handwriting ones and like some of our favorites. But these I kept because I wanted to see when she's older how her handwriting changed. And this is the beginning. So we didn't actually buy all of their supplemental materials. They have like these wooden things, I believe, and like... I did buy that. Let me go grab it. So yeah, I actually forgot that I wanted to include that. We did. I did buy this, the Learning Without Tears board, and we use this a lot more. We actually we're not using it uh, currently for fourth grade, but I use this for pretty much like every. We used it every day for like I don't know. I guess like first grade through third, I had her write words in print on here, or I had her write one word in cursive every day. And so you don't have to get it though, but they have other like supplemental items that are fun and I didn't buy any of those. This was the only thing I bought to go with it. So it's just like a very, like this reminds me of like, you know, like the vintage like 1950s like school books and stuff. And I just, I love like those old vintage books. Like they're just simple. And that's honestly why I picked it because it just reminded me of something that was like minimalist and simple and it's worked for us. Her handwriting's far from perfect. I mean, my my own handwriting is like messy as an adult. So, but I think it's definitely helped her improve. Now I'm just gonna go like through this real quick. So this is first, and um, as you can see, it's just a very simple format. Um, that's first, and then here's so second. We started using cursive. This is what it came with for a second. Here's the printing one. And it has, it starts introducing longer sentences. And then what's interesting about, oh, I don't know. We must have skipped that one. What's inter Oh, we did it here. I see. Okay. So what's interesting about Handwriting Without Tears is they use like these two lines um, versus like, you know, some other programs that we'll use. I'm going to show you this in a minute, but they use, you know, the, the traditional lines and I was kind of worried about that at first, but then I was like, you know what? She doesn't really need the lines in the middle because the way they teach it, you know, is how you start the capital and you use the the two lines to keep the um, lowercase. So I don't feel like it, it was a hindrance to her. I don't feel like it was an issue. And sometimes I don't even know if something's working or not working because with something like handwriting, it's like she has improved over the years. And I don't know if it's just because her dexterity and her coordination and she's like getting older or if it's the program, but it's like that cliche, like if it's, don't, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like that's how I am with handwriting. Like I've never felt like it was not working. So I've just kept it. And I, like I said, I'm a, I really like their design. <laughs> but so yeah, so we started cursive and then I mean, I'm like rambling. Okay, so for third grade, I got both of these. This was just a writing journal. I ended up not using it. I'm going to show you guys in a minute what I'm using it for now. So I kept it. And then we only used the cursive. I didn't buy their print. Or maybe, let's see. I think I bought their print. I don't remember. But the only one, um, I'll show you guys what we use for print in a minute. Um, but this is, yeah. So this was the cursive for third grade. And continuing, like I said, like I, I've been happy with it, you know. Okay, and then that was third grade, and then for fourth grade, um, I got their cursive again, but I decided to use it in combination with this, and in combination with this. So, I got this, which is Imagination Starters. I think I've had this for like two years, and what I have her do is just trace the individual letter. We usually do, we started off this school year where she did one letter a day. Then when she got to Z, we stopped. We've taken a break from it. And then what um, I'm having her do now 
is I'm having to use this. So let me show you. Oh, yeah, I already showed you the Curse of Success. Like I said, this is what we're on now. We're like half, almost halfway through it for fourth grade. And then um, because we're taking a break from doing the individual letters, I remember that I had this left over from third grade and I just have her write like a line or two a day, um, you know, like of her name. And so we just kind of started that because we were doing that other board, but yeah. So I do think these are, are helpful to do additional writing in and I do plan on getting one of these, the blank one for the fifth grade. So I do plan on continuing with that. Okay, so what I've used in, in um, partnership with Handwriting Without Tears from, I guess, first grade or first grade is Draw Right Now. And I love Draw Right Now. So we're at the end of Draw Right Now this year. This is book seven, and then we have book eight, and then we're gonna be done. But I've used, we've used Draw Right Now from the beginning. So we've gone all the way from book one all the way to now for fourth grade, we're gonna finish with book eight. What I do is I literally just have her do one sentence a day and we complete one of these a week i you know you could do it faster or slower but that's how we do it um yeah so i basically my whole goal for this was just for her to do to get some print handwriting in because that's why i only purchased the cursive for fourth grade and that was my print to go with it and that's what i've been doing i've been pairing them both so yeah i love jar right now i just it's just simple it has the traditional lines, and like I said, handwriting without tears has just like, you know the double lines. But so I feel like she gets the combination of like the traditional with this. So yeah. So and then this is just her notebook. This we've been having for years. Got this just like at a local grocery store, and like this is second grade. I think I've shown this before, but you can see like how much her handwriting has. Obviously. Like, a, you know, dexterity and coordination gets better. But, you know, her handwriting, I, I like keeping this notebook instead of getting a new one every year because I like to see how her handwriting has improved. And then, like, I marked book four, which I don't remember what grade that was, but um, four, five, I forgot. This was either second, I think this was like third grade or maybe second grade. And then, but yeah, and then, oh yeah, so book five, I marked it third grade, so her handwriting's getting better, and then now, you know, we're in fourth grade, and this is the section we're on now, so yeah, so that's my favorite handwriting. Now, grammar, so this is my favorite like just additional grammar book went through the whole us born lift the flap grammar and punctuation we like uh, focus on nouns for like a week or two i don't remember if we did a week or two and then i would like she would do some other work like worksheets or whatever i would find on the internet and then we would just use this as like our main book to teach grammar i think i used it for third grade but i just really like it i love lift the flaps it's just a fun way to do um to learn about you know different things so yeah so i really like that one for grammar and then my favorite grammar curriculum that i've been using for i believe two years is what we're using now another homeschool mom recommended this to me and I really love it. And this is Growing With Grammar Level 4. We're on now. It comes with the answer key. This is a student workbook. And this is a student um, manual. And it's really simple. That's why I like it. I know with math, people say like spiral or mastery. I don't know what they consider this. But I think it would be a spiral. Because I feel like it literally goes back over and reteaches concepts from what I've noticed, I think. And that's why I like it because it's just simple. Like she reads this 1.1 subject and predicates. It's like a two page spread usually. So this one's actually three pages. Most of them are two. Let's see, yeah, like that one's two pages. So she just reads this 
Sometimes we read stuff out loud, but most of the time she, I mean, since she's now in fourth grade and even in third grade, she mostly read it on her own. And then I would ask her if she had any questions. Usually she never did. And then when we would get to the, um, yeah, so that's what we're on now, break it down. So she reads this on her own, the two pages, and then she goes straight to this. And, it, you know, it aligns, of course, with the section she just read. And then I check it. And then we go over what she got wrong or if she didn't get anything wrong or whatever. We go over, ask her if she has any questions and then we kind of just go over it when I check it. So yeah, I really like it. I think she's learning a lot with this program. Okay, so that is grammar now. I did grammar, I did vocabulary, I did handwriting. I did what we did do in the morning. Now I'm gonna talk about poetry. Oh, I wanted to show these, I forgot. I just grabbed them. I actually went to Barnes and Nobles like a few days ago and I actually grabbed another one of these. So you can see the whole, how it came. This is the magnetic page clips and I wanted to get another set. It was like $4.95 at Barnes and Noble, but I'll see it. Oh, they're made in the USA too. I'll see if they have these on Amazon. I know they do, but I don't know if like, but I found them at Barnes & Noble. But I'm going to just link them on Amazon because it would just be easier. Um, but, yeah, that's where I got them. And, the, and I love them. So now poetry. So poetry has been a really big part of our homeschool since the beginning. Mainly because I like poetry. And I wanted to show you this cute little picture book. It's called All the World a Poem. I thought this picture book by um, Giles Tebow. And then... Let's see. I think that's the author. Yeah, Giles Tiba. So this is a fun little book if you're like teaching your child about how to write a poem. And then you could, it doesn't like tell you how to write a poem, but it just talks about poetry. And it's very engaging and beautiful. It has like collage. And it's just like, um, you know, it's like, I love poems sweet and silly. I love poems long and freely. All the poems dreaming on the shelf. Poem, poems tall or short or wide are all infinite, infinite inside. So it's like, just has different things like about poetry. Let's see. To write poetry is to pluck silence like a flower and press it gently between the pages of a notebook made of light. I think this would be like a really good gift for a child who writes poetry. Um, no matter what the age, I think picture books are appropriate for even adults. And I think this is like a really good picture book if you're talking about poetry in general to read real quick. Um, it's just very artsy and very nice. I love it. And then this was like one of my favorite poem books that we use. This is A World Full of Poems by DK. So she really loved this book. It's like made for children, of course. So it has like, you know, all you know, child appropriate poems, different categories. It has a cute little ribbon and then some more categories. And then this one, we literally just, you know, we just... I had her pick whatever poem she wanted that day. And so it has like a lot of famous poets and then it has a lot of people like I've never heard of, which is always nice to find new poets. And so yeah, she really liked this book. And like I said, we would literally just read a poem every day, or at least she would, to get exposure to poetry. Shel Silverstein, Silverstein, not sure. Where the sidewalk ends and the light in the attic so we did these one year where we just literally read the whole book of of this. So we just, for this, we started at the beginning because they're black and white and I didn't want to skip one. So we just started at the beginning and then like every day she would just read a poem out loud. She really liked these two. They're just really whimsical. They're all from him. Of course, they're not from different poets. It's all like his original poetry. And then he has some really awesome books, of course, like, the Giving Tree and um, the Missing Piece. So it's always nice to read the read his poetry and then read some of his picture books too. I like introducing her to authors who have a wide range of work. So that was fun. That's what we did one year for poetry. Okay, so then the poetry book that we're using this year is a poem for every day of the year. And it has also has like a nice little ribbon I'm not even sure if this book is specifically made for children. So this is, oh, this is an excerpt from Jane 
air. Hold on, let's see. Oh wait, maybe no. It's it's, it's a um. It's not from Jane Eyre. She's just is just mentioning Jane Eyre. I'm excited. Oh okay, this is a poem by Charlotte Bronte. So this book, I really love it because it's literally a poem for every day of the year. It starts with, let's see. It starts with January. So we started this in August because that's when we started the school year. But it has a date, and I like that. So you can just follow along with the date poem for every, you know, day of the year. So we started, you know, like in August. So some of the poems are longer, and they're not, like this one was about, it had to do with, like, um, you know, like, war stuff and so like this one again this is about it's i don't know the meadow mouse by never heard of this but this one either but it has some a lot of poems like john keats of course he's a famous poet but it has poems that people have never heard of which i love learning about new poets like this one's um about mary queen of scots so it has i guess what i'm looking for is like has a more like sophisticated poetry and I thought my daughter would be a little bit more engaged than she was. So we kind of took a break from it. I continue to read it and then I'm introducing it back to her. And so I think it just depends on the day for her, but I really think it's a beautiful book. So this one was my favorite of all time. This is a bookworm journal and you get to tear off the edge like a little bookworm, you eat it. Like um, he eats the page when he's done like he has an appetite for the edge of the books. And she really liked doing that. And so it's basically just simple. I had her, you know, a lot of these are read alouds because I think, I don't remember what grade we had this in. So it had a parent rating because a lot of these are read alouds, but I didn't do the parent rating, of course, if she read it by herself. But like this one, we did it together. So I like that if you're looking for like a book, a book journal that, is you can incorporate as a read aloud. This one's nice because it has that. And you can check, you know, read it by yourself, read it by yourself, read and listen, listen the whole time. So I really like this one. And it has some other things sometimes. We didn't, I didn't have her always do the stuff on the left, but. And then another one that I liked, I got this one off Amazon too. This is a book log, reading log. So this one definitely, she didn't put all the titles here. I didn't really have her, um, but this one's a little bit more in, in intense because it has like a lot more things to do and like you know longer things to write about. But some of the, some of them I didn't I didn't really mainly we use this as a log, so I didn't really like have strict guidelines for it. Just another option for a book log. Okay, now the last thing I have to show you guys is um, yeah, like I mentioned, I'm not including read alouds and independent reads, which is a big part of language arts because that was a, I made a separate video on that and my video will be too long. But I wanted to mention one little quick set of books since this is a language arts video, just to include real quick. I wanted to say how one thing that's been very important to me, I think that just came naturally, was to introduce my daughter to different authors, illustrators that I enjoy, that she enjoys and kind of follow them throughout their work. So I wanted to start by mentioning these, this set of books by John Classen. So John Classen is known for his picture, he's an illustrator and a writer, but he's known, I think, more for his picture books. Um, this one won um, Caldecott Medal. So this is not my hat, it's just a very cool, simple picture book with a really interesting story. Uh, it has like a nice hook, and the illustrations are really cool very minimalist so he's known for his picture books this book this series is really cool picture book series so of course my daughter loved this book and she's been having it for years probably since like kindergarten or first grade whenever i don't know when it came out but so john class and i love him a lot as an illustrator she loves him as an author illustrator so then i happened to find that he illustrated this book so move i'm, I'm doing these in order of age so here's picture book one of my favorite picture books. Here's one of my favorite chapter books. One of my favorite, I would say lower middle grade. And then one of my favorite, a little bit higher middle grade. All illustrated by John Classen. And that's what I want to show you guys. How like we collect certain authors and illustrators, you know, their work. So that was a picture book. Now here is the chapter book. 
This is Skunk and Badger, written by Amy Timberlake, and then pictures by John Class. And that's how I found this book. This is one of my favorite, I don't know if you call it a chapter book. I think it possibly would get, I'm not sure. The font is larger and it has some illustrations. And like, see, it has, uh, let's see how many pages. It has 120 pages. And it's a really fun story about two animal friends. If you like Frog and Toad or The Wind in the Willows, this would be something that you might be interested in. I've done other videos on this book before. It's one of my favorite books I've ever found. We're going to be doing it as a read aloud for fourth grade, but I pre-read it on my own just for fun. I like reading about cute little animal stories. Okay, so John Clausen illustrated that, and that's like a chapter-ish book. And then I found this book, this series, The Incorrigible Children of Ash and Blaze. I did a whole video just on this series if you want to check that out if you're interested. So this is, I found this book too by him. I just, I always search him up to see if he has any new books. And I happened to find this. So this is by Mary Rose Wood. This is a series of six books, really fun. So John Clausen did the illustrations for three out of the six. Another illustrator did the last three. I'm not sure why, but his illustrations are in this book. And the, I love the series. And I'm just gonna say real quick, it's, just about, it's about a governess and she's taking care of these three children who were found in the woods. And it's very quirky, and it kept my interest through all six. I think it would make a really good read aloud also, and a good independent read, or any, either way. And I have a whole video on these if you wanna find out more. And then, Pax by Sarah Pennypacker. And again, illustrated by John Classen. So it's like, I kinda of think of like growing with John Classen. It's like my daughter, going from picture book to chapter book, even though, like I said, that's just an example. I didn't have time in this video to go over. There's a million other examples of that, but this, this was one of my favorite middle grade reads from the past year or two. I don't remember if I read it last year, this year, but I know I read Pax, the second one this year, Pax Journey Home. So yeah, so beautiful story. She's, she's actually one of my favorite writers. So yeah, and I found this book also from John Classen. Found all of these from just by searching his name, even though, yeah, so he's, so thank you, John Classen. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have today in my video. Thanks so much, you guys, for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate it and liking.